Hello, hosts and travelers. Welcome to the podcast, Hosting Your Home. Each day around the world, millions of guests stay in other people's homes using the Airbnb platform. Debbie Herdert looks for stories that come from these connections to share them with you. Listen in as we hear stories that teach us the human side of hosting your home. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Hosting Your Home. Today's episode is a conversation between Ashley Kern and I. Ashley and her husband own and operate the No Hope, No Fear Tattoo Art Studio in Southeast Portland. Ashley and James live in the Craftsman Home, which houses their art studio, and they are in the process of moving upstairs, allowing the back part of the home for their Airbnb. This episode is different in that they do not yet have an active listing with Airbnb. And Ashley invited me over to do a walkthrough with her and talk about what more she might want to do or if she might want to change anything she's done or just to get some confirmation on some of the things that she had already done. This was really a fun thing for me to do. And I I love her style and what an interesting, interesting way to have an Airbnb. One of the things we talked about was the Airbnb business ready plan. Businesses can subscribe to this part of the platform and someone in their company, a designated someone in their company is allowed to make reservations for their employees on their behalf. So this eliminates the individual needing to make his or her own reservations. To date, there are over 260,000 businesses who have subscribed. And on the host side, what we need to do is meet some criteria in order for our listings to show up. And once we meet that criteria, you will see in the listing itself, right underneath the heading, a little suitcase. And that is the emblem that they use to show that this property is business travel ready. The criteria that we need to meet is we have no pets in the area, that we have high-speed Wi-Fi, there needs to be a desk or table where some work can be done, and the guest needs to have 24-hour access, which means that, like a hotel, they can come and go as they please. So if you'd like to join us as we go on our tour of Ashley's property, we'd love to have you. Okay, we're in No Hope, No Fear Tattoo Art Studio. Tattoo Art Studio with Ashley Kern. And we're just going to do a walkthrough of the Airbnb area. We, we came in through the tattoo studio and have passed through two doors that lock to section off the Airbnb to the business section. And this is a lovely little parlor room here, too. Yes, we were able to carve out this living space from our current living space to separate it from where we will stay versus where the guests will stay, and the guests will never have access to our commercial tattoo business in the front. Great, great. We're currently in the living room space. We have a full queen sleeper sofa in the couch. Oh, nice. Oh, good. We just added a bunch of canvas prints to get some art on the wall. It looks good, too. Thank you. It looks nice. Are you the decorator? Yes, me and my husband both. Great. So we'll continue down the hall, and the first door next will be the big bathroom. That's a huge bathroom. Yeah, we have a nice Oh, my goodness. Tub. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, I really like it, and I, I hope guests do, too, with the nice original tile. This house was built in 1922. Okay. So we're hopefully soon we'll be coming up on our hunter. And this is a craftsman-style yes. house, you said? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, they'll love this. This is lots of space in here. This is a nice, huge room. Yeah, we'll save the kitchen for last and okay. go straight on to the, the best part, the, in my opinion, the bedroom. Oh, yeah. Oh, and you've got a tall platform bed. Is that a queen size? Yes, queen size uh-huh. bed. Yeah, and nice windows to the outside. And Yeah, we're, closet. our big project next will be, we're working on the yard this week. Oh, you did mention that on the phone. Yeah, that's... That's one of the last things I want to complete before we get renters in here. And so what do you want to do out there? We have a lot of original flagstone that came with the property that James has been holding on to. Mm -hmm. So we hope to take uh, the yard and dig it up and create a nice patio with the flagstone. 
and put some native plants around. Great, great. Something low maintenance, but still people uh, can enjoy the, the neighborhood because yeah. we're in such a commercial district, it's really nice to have a little piece of land tucked behind the house. And with every Airbnb, you want a place to be outside. Yes, especially in beautiful Portland with yeah. all the stuff to walk to, but you still want to have your privacy. Right. So you're, you're zoned commercial. We're mixed-use commercial mixed and residential. Mixed-use commercial. Because, well, so this is actually is a lovely house. It doesn't... It, it's, it looks like a residence or was yeah. at one point in time. Mm-hmm. And then just right across the street, you've got some restaurants, don't you? Yeah, we have the Tidbit Food Cart Pod right there. Uh, oh. And then we have at least 30, 40 restaurants, including Pock Pock and Ava Jeans, which are really, you know, fancy, yes. uh, high-rated restaurants in yes. Portland. world famous. Yeah, and, uh, and Salt Straw right here? In. Yeah, right down the street. Oh, cool. It's like within five blocks. you got Salt and Straw, Pock Pock, Whiskey Soda Lounge, also owned by Pock Pock. And then uh, the Bollywood Theater moved in, so we got oh, some delicious okay. Indian cuisine right there. Yeah. So, Ashley, when do you expect to be able to open for business? I'm hoping August 1st. By August 1st is my deadline. But we've been working feverishly for about eight months. Have you? Yeah, doing some renovations and uh-huh. trying to move our stuff around. And uh-huh. we travel a lot, too, with the tattoo business. Oh, you uh, do? My husband does conventions all over the world. Oh, he ooh. teaches a seminar about cover-ups and all kinds of other uh, tattooing the impossible is one other one he does. So we oh, we've been to all over Europe, and we can go anywhere because mm-hmm. tattoo conventions are everywhere. Mm-hmm. Well, you know that's yeah. an industry I don't know anything about. So it's really hot and important. Important. <laughs> Yeah, it's over a hundred tattoo studios. And this is the door to outside? No, nope, this is a closet, and we oh, got okay. some nice old original built-ins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great. So then we take a left here into the kitchen. Wow! Look at the kitchen. Look at that kitchen. I'm, you know, I see a lot of Airbnb hosts that don't want anything to do with kitchens. And I want everyone to cook their little hearts out, you know, and enjoy all of our appliances and cookware. How unique. And we have a gas stove, so a lot of people can appreciate yes. that. Yes, yes. I make and sure nice. to find an electric tea kettle. Good. That's a good, <laughs> good job. Yes. <laughs> nice, big refrigerator. So you will be sharing the kitchen space with your guests. Not when they're renting. Oh, that's what you said. When you when they're renting, you will... I want to give them the entire space. You'll go that, out. Seems like a lot of people like okay. that. There's so many awesome places in the neighborhood, and yes. uh, we can plan for it ahead of time. Uh-huh. And how long have you been living here? Uh, since James bought the building, he's been living here, and I moved in when we got together about five years about ago. About five years ago, okay. We've been married for two years. And congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> how long have you been thinking about turning it into an Airbnb? Only about a year. Okay. started realizing that... Uh, the way our zoning is, we have to be at least 50% residential, at least. We could go full residential, but we can't go full commercial because of the way the city has made this an urban dwelling commercial zone, especially with all the restaurants moving in, and they want to keep housing. So I was really concerned trying to take over our residents to try to make more tattoo income, so I was going to get more tattoo boosts back here. But then the city was like, you need at least 50% residential. So we thought, okay, that's fine. And then People would stay with us and get tattooed, and I was like, well, maybe we should maybe we should be onto something here. We can get people in here, and they could you know, maximize some income there. So your target market basically is going to be your tattoo customers? Yes. Primarily, it was mostly for people who were visiting as tattoo guest artists, which we've had at least 10 before. They come in from mostly around the United States, and they'll, they'll see, you saw our guest station. They can work mm-hmm. there get their own clients and tattoo for a couple weeks if they want, and then we have a place for them to stay. Sometimes it would be a tattoo client. We have friends in Seattle and other places that would fly in or drive and get a tattoo and need somewhere to stay. There's really no options in the neighborhood except for a a guest house up the road and then Motel 6 on Pow. So there's no hotels around here, Mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know about Airbnbs, but... I'm sure there's plenty. I've seen a lot of them now that I've done some research, but I thought, well, why couldn't I... You know, I'm already well, letting totally people stay could. with me. Why don't I start Absolutely. charging these people right. and open up to more than just people I know, but other people in the tattoo industry, yeah. and then even more so the whole network Airbnb provides. And how often does this happen that you're hosting someone um, in in your tattoo business here? I'd already? say, I mean, how many guests total have we had? You yeah, think? yeah, something along maybe about well, ten, and a lot of them have been repeat people. Like we have a really good friend and tattoo artist in California and he comes to visit and then a client in Seattle and we had one gal fly in from New York it was the first time we had somebody that I wasn't already familiar with 
and that worked out really well, kind of, you know, testing out the waters. And, and people loved it, so I thought I could do this uh-huh. to this, the open market. And so were these people who were tattoo artists, or were they coming to get a, a tattoo? A few of them were tattoo clients, but mostly tattoo artists okay. that would come for a guest spot. But our friend in Seattle, yes. he gets tattooed, and uh, the gal from New York was getting tattooed, and then anybody who you know, wants a tattoo that's flying in could really maximize the space. How interesting to even think that that is something that you would fly to a destination for, specifically for. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy if you think about it if you're not familiar with the industry, but the things that my husband does with tattooing is, uh, is highly sought after. Not everyone can tattoo what he does. So he has a real niche in the market about doing cover-ups and his color realism. And uh, our, our famous, uh, I like to say it's famous, but our, our industry really recognizes my husband's name as a pioneer somewhat. He's been tattooing 22 years almost. Oh, and what is his name? James Kern. James Kern. Okay, so you have the same last name then. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to show you his uh, tattoo portfolio yeah. if you're interested. Oh, yeah. I think that's fascinating. So, yeah, the people will travel for him. And we travel also to meet other clients around the world in different markets. Wow. So when you travel to other clients mm-hmm. or to do, like, a teaching gig, do you stay in Airbnbs? Not yet, actually. <laughs> Have you stayed in one yet? I've stayed in a few, okay. but my husband hasn't. Okay. And he's really interested, too. Just uh, the last trip we went on was to Venice, and I was looking at Airbnbs at the time, but I wasn't really sure exactly where the venue was, so I got the, the Boutico Hotel right across the, the canal. Uh-huh. So it, some, it's really about the ease of travel. Yes. A lot of these tattoo conventions are in a venue where they have housing, like a hotel with a banquet room. Mm-hmm. So usually it's, it's best to just go to the convention and take the elevator up to your hotel room. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Sometimes I've found that if you're going to a convention of a particular sort and you know some of the people, then you may find that there is an Airbnb associated with that. Yeah. And so that's been fun, too, for us when we've gone someplace Usually it's an Airbnb convention, and we'll just stay with another Airbnb host who's also going to the convention, and then I'm you know that about makes that. it really easy. Yeah, well, you know we've stayed at a bunch of other vacation rentals mm-hmm. during tattoo conventions, mostly through Vacasa, VRBO, mm-hmm. Home Away. You know I've done all those before. Yeah. We just haven't really tapped into the Airbnb together. But I took some road trip from Texas to New Orleans with my really good friend Ryan. And we stayed in a few Airbnbs over there, and we absolutely loved it. And that, that kind of got my brain tinkering, you know? Yes, absolutely. It can be very different. So yes. let's talk a little bit. So mm-hmm. you have, um, are, will you limit to four guests or, or three guests, or what are you thinking? I'm hoping, you know, two to four. Two or to four, even one to you've four. got the guest, the queen bed. Yeah. Have you slept on that sofa bed? I have, actually, and, and I it? loved it. Okay, good. That's <laughs> I've important. I've had another guest also sleep on it and uh-huh. trying it out, and they said it was the most comfortable sleeper sofa they'd ever been on. We really get an affidavit from that yeah. person, a testimonial of some sort. Yeah, we spent a, a quite a deal extra to get the fanciest pull-out couch mm-hmm. because I, I didn't want people to just throw their kids on it. You know, I wanted it to be for anybody that well, actually, that's interested. And that brings up another question: You're kid friendly? Sometimes. I'm not really sure yet. I'm okay. really choosing all my options. Okay. I'm trying so, to decide if that would fit our market. Yeah. I'm not really sure what our market is yet. Right. So the purpose of this yeah. conversation is is really to explore mm-hmm. what you could do there with that. And from what I've seen so far, you could easily be kid friendly. Oh yeah, and I think it's a perfect neighborhood. We're filled with families, and uh-huh. they love the food carts and walking around, and it, parks are everywhere. And. So so I'm hearing them outside. That's not a problem. And that's the door that we just saw on the other side. Yes. Mm-hmm. So if there is a child in here crying, would they hear that out there? Would that be disruptive? No, probably not. But what I'd be more concerned about is people hearing what's on the other side. Sometimes you can hear music or laughing from the tattoo studio, which I'm making very clear in my listing, that uh, there could be right. some sound travel. If that was the case, then, then you would be concerned then about... A baby sleeping and being woken up from what was going on in the other room? It would never be that loud. I'm just okay. more concerned about guest comfort. You know, okay. if they uh, hear some ambient noises, yeah. they may not like that. And you know, everything can be explained. Yeah. Everything can be can be adjusted, you know. And if you had 
if you if you had a family in here, you would just tell them that, look, this is what we are, this is what we do, this is what you can expect. And mm-hmm. the more clear your listing is, the better off you are. Maybe you can look at my listing and when I'm done I'd with love it. to, <laughs> sure. And the other thing is that anything that you can explain through a picture rather than words, or in addition to your words, mm-hmm. is going to get across that point much better because what's happening to our population is that we don't read anymore. Yeah. <laughs> or we read in little sound bites, you know? Mm-hmm. So anything that you can offer a visual, like that, everybody loves pictures. Yeah. So if I'm you a visual put a picture person. that says, you know, baby on board or tattoo parlor, you may be, you know, some noise alert or, you know, something like that so mm-hmm. that so that you have that essence in a picture. Okay? Perfect. So let's walk around and look at mm-hmm more with the thought of your clientele in, as far as families are concerned. So this is a good thing. Your um, your bedroom here is has the, the bathroom in between mm-hmm. the two bedrooms. So you could do two couples easily. Yeah, that's what I was and thinking. And not or, have a noise interference. Or, yeah, or maybe, baby. you know, mom and dad and mm-hmm. children in the other room with yeah, the TV. Yeah. And you have enough floor space here to put a little pack and play mm-hmm. if there was an infant so that, yeah. that would be an option you've got the floor is very clean so there's no clutter down there nothing for anybody to hurt themselves on no steps there um, are steps on the back porch to get into the unit okay the way they will enter but okay it's like five steps okay Do, and you probably have it will have a, a handrail there's there a handrail okay mm-hmm. the bathroom is looks fabulous as far as a kid is concerned. Um, nobody's going to fall into the bathtub <laughs> probably, and it looks, this looks really awesome. Thank you. And let's look at that sitting room again. So this is very cool too to have the sitting room entertainment area so that you can um, come in here and hang out. Probably would if you had another couple. This would work okay, but then that compromises your your sitting area too. So optimally, you would want to have a pair of adults and at the most a child, maybe two, depending on what their ages were. Mm-hmm. A small family would work better than two couples because yeah. of the sitting room area and the sleeping issue would be would be what I would think. And then if you in your um, your shelves down here, if you just keep this kind of thing kid-friendly so that you don't have anything that can get broken mm-hmm. or that they can hurt themselves. And so you'd probably want to move your modem up someplace, put it on a either behind the TV or on, on a freestanding place on the wall or something. Or even put the modem in the closet. Is that a closet? It is a closet. So that is that is actually the Xbox 360. Oh, is that what that is? Oh, I so just pop my glasses off. I'm yeah. not. <laughs> well, like, we give them a few video games, uh-huh. and some of them are child friendly, like Lego Batman, one of my favorites. And mm-hmm. you take the Xbox 360, and we have Xbox Live, so that's their Wonderful. way to get through to Hulu and Netflix, which yes. we provide. And then there's okay, a great. YouTube app as well. The Wi-Fi is uh, zoned. There's like a special zone for this so that we're not sharing the same Wi-Fi. It's just a different account in the same Wi-Fi. Oh, wonderful. We have fiber optic, and it, the modem's actually in the tattoo shop, which I'm here oh, all the time. Yeah, great. And you're living upstairs, so there may be some noise from you walking on, on yes. up there, um, which would be another thing you'd want to put in your listing. Yeah. Um, and in order to do the business listing, are you familiar with that yet? Yes. The only thing that stops me from the business listing is I don't have the the desk. I'm not sure what the laptop friendly situation is, but no. I saw the collapsible desk yes. or the smaller desk, yes. and I'm really concerned. And that's what I would do here Cause there's because there's such a large closet under the right. stairs here that could accommodate some storage. And the one that I have, really, it it only comes out like this far. You know, and it's it's small, so you can move it around. That'd and be great. It just it just folds the the it just pops out, it folds out. Yeah, we're we're going to allow uh, anytime check in because we Good. we have the key pad on the on the door, great. And then people can just let themselves in, and uh, like I said, fiber optics. So those are some of the requirements for business listings. So I've been considering it. Yeah. I just need the little desk now. Yeah, be super easy. Mm-hmm. There's really not not anything you need to do anymore. I mean, your kitchen is fully operational. Yeah, right? yeah. You could you could start writing tomorrow. 
I know, it's just so exciting. <laughs> it I just is. have a few things I need to do still. I think that we want to get that yard settled for them. I don't blame you for, for doing that, for wanting to have that, mm-hmm. but it pro- depending on the size of the project, what you're talking about can be pretty big. Yeah. Um, and if you wanted to start making some money and using it now, you could. Okay. So you could do something like even as, as mediocre as getting... Um, an indoor outdoor carpeting. Let's go look at that yeah. because I think that there might be, you know, something that you could do in a um, short term kind of way and then work around it. My dad's painting the back porch, possibly just so you know there may okay. be some extra voices. Okay. And just as a quick note, this is the basement door, but nobody will have access to that. That's okay. why it says no access. Okay. And uh, so actually, this brings up another thought laundry facilities. They are in the basement, and I'm not giving access okay, to that. Okay, okay. And it's, I'm going to make that clear in the listing. Yeah, yeah. So this is the back porch where the guests will come in. Uh-huh. And we've been painting the porch and uh-huh. uh, painting our custom fence. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Oh, well, So right access here, will yeah. be up through the driveway, through the fence, and to the back porch. Okay, so here's the solution for you. Uh-huh. Don't even, I mean, don't, so don't. Away from that speaker. Oh, that's a good idea. Don't think about. Um, changing out this idea. I mean, keep, go with this, mm-hmm. but get a little table and chairs mm-hmm. and um, fancy it up with a few pots and, of flowers and stuff like that and put it right there so people can come out I here. I figured I could just say no access until this is done. If you're in the middle of a project yeah. and you've got stones and stuff, people can fall on. See, and we have these stones uh, all lined up against the other house there. We want to make the whole yard like that and then eventually i have dreams of a little fire pit and an umbrella you know and yes maybe even a hot tub you never know i would get a table with Uh an umbrella if you're if you're gonna go ahead with this you know then and put it out here Mm -hmm. um just to get started and that that would do enough just to get started and then and then this will can be your your project in motion depends on how much you want to wait yeah because i don't see that you really need to Really? That's really? exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I have no expectations, just a lot of excitement and big dreams. <laughs> well, Portland is now a destination market, mm-hmm. and because of where you are, you're going to get lots of business. And um, I, we're full all of August, all of July. Most people are. Mm-hmm. So for you, for you to open up right now, you'd be starting to bring in business and helping to fund your projects and... You know, it's the best time in Portland also. It is. Summertime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All the trees are ready. For, yeah. You go on a hike and enjoy the ice cream. And yeah, and they want to come. Yeah. And you're in a desirable area. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, this neighborhood and has really changed in the last two years. You'll want to lock this off, too. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I did put that in the ad so far that the garage is not part of the uh-huh. listing. And whenever you have guests, you will be here? Mm-hmm. Because I think you told me that... If you were not here, you would be closing down. Yeah, I don't feel comfortable probably renting, especially if I'm in Europe or somewhere traveling. I'd rather be here. I have a support team of family. I grew up here. I was born in Portland. All my family's still here. So I would have somebody maybe after 10 listings or something, I can feel more comfortable to let it go. But right now, I want all the control. I I understand that. Um, To help with your control, let's talk about locks a little bit. Yeah. Um, You have a, like a, a... a realtor kind of lock there is that Mm -hmm. right yeah it has a little pin pad and then you can access the key inside okay that works as long as you're around Mm -hmm. the risk you take with that kind of a lock is that people can copy the key yes and that's happened to us that is concerning we got one of those keyless lock system like the keypad on the door yeah 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 yeah, with it that, that controls the deadbolt Okay. And then you change the um, lock for every guest that comes in. That makes sense. And yeah. I've been looking into those, but I'm so overwhelmed by all the choices. So maybe you can give me your, uh, yeah. your product that you're using. Yeah, um, we're using e-rental locks. It's mm-hmm. a company out of Canada. They're expensive. They're, mm-hmm. you know, like 400 bucks a lock. There are others that you can get that are what, Wi-Fi dependent. Ours is not Wi-Fi dependent mm-hmm. in that we can assign the lock um, without, without having to um, have the internet working, and sure. Careful, webpage. Okay. On the blacksmith. Yeah. Okay. 
we do get our codes mm -hmm. off the internet, but we don't um, access the lock through our phones or anything like that. So I have if seen the, some where you can right, change it remotely you can. and reprogram it. And since we're here, you know, it shouldn't be a problem to manually change a lock. And you don't even have to do that. Oh. You can still do it on the computer. Okay. But, but it's not dependent but on the Wi-Fi. It's not dependent on the Wi-Fi. Right. And it has a battery? It does. It does have a battery. Does that battery go out often? Um, or we've had ours for it? two years and haven't changed it yet. Haven't needed well, to. Well, hot dog, I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds like exactly what I've been looking at. Me and my yeah. husband have been talking about it, and it's definitely right up there. And we were talking about getting a, a security camera on the outside of the door, just uh -huh. or right inside the door before you get into the unit, just to see who's coming and going, and ha it'll record when it's motion activated, just to see, you know, if people did try to come up and duplicate the key, we'd see who it is? That's not a bad idea. You certainly Just don't because we're on this busy street. Yeah, and you certainly don't want to have um, cameras inside the no, house. No, definitely not. Outside is not a bad idea. Um, are you going to be pet friendly? No. Okay, yeah. so that's another thing too, mm -hmm. is people sometimes will just try to sneak their Yeah, and I thought that would also be <laughs> helpful with the, the camera. Uh, I just worry about anybody who might have allergies, uh -huh. and we also don't use chemicals in our cleaning or right. Uh, any kind of synthetic things like that in the laundry and whatnot, so I'm very sensitive to smells and things myself. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah, I can't wait to get that information about that lock. I'd love to have a lock. Sure. Like that. Sure. I'll be happy to send it to you. Somebody left you some money. You got a tip there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as staging is concerned, when you're, when is your um, photographer coming? Not yet. I, I, she said sometime after the 10th, and she's going to let me know in the next few days what her schedule is. Okay. So I'm hoping sometime next week. Okay. So I really worked hard to get it close. Yes. Yes. And, and the sooner the better, because That's really why we're, it looks like you're just about ready. That's why we painting. Yeah. You know, my yeah. dad's finishing the fence and the back porch. And and is this your house over here, too? No. Okay. Um, that is the eyesore of a neighbor. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so here's the suggestion about staging. Get everything off the counter that you can. Okay, even you know, like the keep, electric tea kettle? I would probably maybe even move that. Okay. Um, leave the spices because that's cute. Mm -hmm. Leave the stuff hanging up that's cute. Mm -hmm. um, maybe leave the coffee pot or if you want, what you might do is um, stage a little coffee area. And so you have your teapot and your coffee and ever, all your coffee paraphernalia in one place so that your, um, your photographer can take a picture of that particular thing, mm -hmm. you know, so that people can see, okay, there's a coffee pot, there's an electric key, tea kettle, there's, you know, whatever. And then if you offer tea and coffee for mm -hmm. your guests, have that out there and you can include that in the caption of the photo. Use your captions um, really extensively mm -hmm. with your pictures. Set the table. Yes. Have plates and dishes and, and glasses. Flowers in the middle. Yeah, maybe some flowers. Um, yeah, and then, and then it, you know, this looks very homey, but you want it to look super clean. Yes. So you'll want to probably maybe move the toaster off, leave the microwave, mm -hmm. take the bowl, you know, that kind of yeah. thing. So that, and then you can put little foo-foo things for uh, a color spots. Mm -hmm. So, say, a clear bowl of lemons and limes this your green and yeah and yellow and you've got green and yellow in this kitchen yeah we got a rainbow and colors you do here. so you could <laughs> really you could really pop out some of the colors as as you have already with your teapot and your and my beautiful yeah, that, vintage fun i love that little couch i got it the this lounge is on so Hawthorne. cute and it's so comfortable too and i love color and my husband chose all the colors in here he, he, yeah, since he's it's an artist yeah. I like the phones. That is, that's very. He, he brought this rotary phone back for me from Germany. A oh, friend of his oh. gave it to him, and he's like, Ashley's gonna love this. Oh, that's sweet. It actually works. This is not plugged in, so we have a more traditional phone for guests. But I think it's fun. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's neat. So let's see. Um, that's the kitchen. I, I really like the tile that you've chosen here too. Yeah, I love how it has such warm tones in with the dark colors. And you can put some flowers in the bathroom. You've got the flat space, so that would be really easy to do. Yeah, I'll definitely hide the, 
the little garbage can and the toilet. Yeah, brushes. that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it can come right back out. And then, uh, gosh, I don't think I would do anything in this bedroom. Maybe I'd have it's to really the pretty. machine. <laughs> oh, maybe that. Okay. Close the you room. also might want the um, photographer to make sure that they get that, the, the air conditioner yes. in the picture. And maybe some flowers on that. But yeah. Um, if you offer bathrobes, you might have bathrobes like over the table, over the bed. I or... should get some because of that nice giant cloth foot tub. And we just replaced our water heater a year mm -hmm. ago. So we have unlimited hot water for days. Wonderful. Yeah. Sometimes when I'm... Uh, when I have the time, I'll I'll just take a long bath and you know listen to some music, and it's really calming. Another thing to take a picture of mm -hmm. and caption when you yeah. when you get to that point. Unlimited hot water yes. is something any woman would love. And all these canvas prints, me and my husband took all the photos for. Oh, did you really? Yeah, we were avid hikers. We love waterfalls. And I wanted people to see pictures specifically oh. from our travels around Oregon and Washington. You did this for your Airbnb? Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. We've been meaning to take pictures uh, and get them printed, but yeah. we finally did it with this nudge, and we've really been enjoying it because, like I said, we travel all over doing hiking, and we wanted people to see what the Pacific Northwest has to offer. So all people the prints are from Oregon this. or Washington. Not only that, Ashley, but... I took these two photos. Did you really? I They're did. gorgeous. That's uh, my favorite waterfall, White River Falls. Yeah? And you can see my friend in the picture. Oh, yeah. For a context of size. Do you have <laughs> a, a... massive waterfall. You must have an awesome camera. I took it with my cell phone. No, you did I really did. It's, it's ridiculous, isn't oh. it? <laughs> wow, that is... Yeah. But Incredible. I want people to see what, mm -hmm. what, what I feel is the draw mm -hmm. to Portland, is its proximity to the beautiful Oregon coast, mm -hmm. the beautiful Mount Hood National Forest, or yes. the Gifford Pinchot, or anywhere mm -hmm. that we have that people you know, don't have these kind of resources like waterfalls, or 300-year-old trees, or right, a beautiful, right. you know, undeveloped 350 miles of coastline, like Oregon does. You can't you know, build on the coastline. If you should put a little thing on the wall saying that you took the pictures... Mm -hmm. And if you still have the copies, oh, yeah. you could sell them. These are just amazing. What did it cost to, to have that uh, have that done? I got them at the Costco Photo Center, and I'm not exactly sure Costco how much... Costco will do this? Yeah, costcophotocenter.com does beautiful canvas prints. You can pick them up at the local warehouse or get them shipped. I had them shipped because I didn't want to huh. bother. We yeah. bought 13 of them. So, and you see a few more over here. They, we so bought you just sent, one, it, so sent them lot. your pictures and, and told them what you wanted? And... You just get on their website and they have a whole uh, catalog of different products you can uh, buy. Yeah. And it's really easy to upload your photo and then pick out which canvas size works perfect for it. Well, you did beautiful work. This Thank so you. Pretty. Yeah, I find them uh, really affordable. I don't remember how much each one was, but it was very reasonable. I did a lot of research. I love mm -hmm. internet research. So I've been, mm -hmm. that's why I'm all over the forums and getting engaged mm -hmm. in the, the community yeah, now. Yeah, it's great. So I'm really trying to I look forward find to a good, good way to market our natural resources, because I think that's the biggest draw to Portland, in my opinion. I know there's One wonderful them. restaurants and everything, yeah. but hour to the ocean, hour to the forest. Yeah. We have a desert, you know? Yeah. This oh, is neat, too. I want to yeah. just point out your, your little octopus candle thing, because you might want to not have <laughs> candles for people. Yes, that's you know? why they're electronic yeah, candles that's with a, great. a handy remote. Mm -hmm. So you watch a TV, you can turn them all on. <laughs> awesome. Great. Good job. Well, I can't think of anything else that I would I would recommend you do. I think you've done a really excellent job. I was expecting to come over here and you would be under construction. Oh, yeah. So we kind of were, but <laughs> thankfully we're not anymore. We replaced this floor. Uh, if you kind of notice the hallway floor to this floor, uh -huh. this floor uh, used to be the master bedroom. Uh -huh. But since it was the larger room of the two rooms that we are offering, we thought this would be best to have the living room space and then mm -hmm. the pull-out couch. Right, so, so it, it'll it, fit. It's a queen yeah. size, but it still comes out to have enough room to walk around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we were big on safety, so we have carbon monoxide detectors. We have interconnected uh, fire alarms per the yes. Portland permitting mm -hmm. uh, ordinances. And then we also have a nice fire extinguisher in the kitchen. Good. And a first aid kit, of course. Great. All you need is a picnic table or and some, some kind of an outdoor table. <laughs> really, I think if you put your listing up, you'll get gas right away. Thank you. I was really surprised that they quickly responded to my photography recommendation because uh, I just put a few 
real fast pictures from my cell phone up and the listing isn't even published yet. And I emailed them and four days later they said we could come, which is surprising because some people wait months. I know it depends on how many photographers are in the area and how demanding the area is. I didn't know that they would even do it before your listing goes out. I didn't either, but uh, Dave Matthews in the Airbnb Mm -hmm. Portland Forum, he and I were emailing because he's a good resource to help out with my questions. And he said, you know, first off, just get some photos up and hit the button now and see what happens. And Mm -hmm. four days later, Andrea's like, let's do this. So... Very good. I know it'll be a while before they actually get up, so I need to take other pictures. But I'm hoping my husband can take some of the pictures right when he, you know, right after the photographer comes, we have it still staged, and he can take some pictures real quick Mm -hmm. so that we can go live. If you've listened to our conversation by downloading this episode from our website, you will have seen that there are pictures there that show Ashley's property. We can't give you... A, uh, a link to her listing because it's not active yet so you wouldn't be able to see it. So we've done our best to show you what we're talking about as far as the different rooms are concerned. And part of the uh, episode that is actually not recorded is when we went outside Ashley walked me out and, and I encouraged her to take a picture of the home from the street so that the guests can see exactly what the what the property looks like. Also, this is such a colorful part of Portland with food trucks and restaurants and activity is just right next door. I also asked her to take some pictures of the street itself and some of the local businesses so that people can understand how walkable this area is. I also encouraged her to play up the bikeability of the area. There's a bike score that you can you can ascertain the same as you can a walking score. You can find it online, and she, which she did, and in her neighborhood, her bike score is 100. 100 out of 100. That is huge. And so I also encouraged her to, to take her bike out and or to take some pictures of bike, bicyclists That's definitely something that she could play up and use as an attracting feature of her property, as well as the fact that the niche of having a tattoo studio right there is pretty incredible. This was really a fun interview, and I look forward to going back to Ashley's home after she's been in business for a few months and finding out what has happened and what kinds of things she's run into and how she's changed uh, her business approach. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I look forward to seeing you next week. As always, you can find us on Stitcher and iTunes and Google Play and of course our own website. We have our Facebook page now for members, which you can find at Facebook and just forward slash hosting your home. Thanks for joining us, and I look forward to next week. Bye-bye.